good afternoon. Today is the 20th of January 2021, Inauguration Day. So God help the United States. Uh, God bless the United States and uh, prayers for the new president and prayers for and thanks to President Trump. This is the second part or part two of many parts on federal law enforcement careers. My last session or last episode was on the United States Secret Service. And uh, I'm going to continue this until I get through most of the federal law enforcement agencies. So if you are a police officer in a mun municipal police department, you don't like your management. If you are in the military, uh, an NCO, uh, perhaps uh, maybe nearing retirement uh, or just getting out of the military after you know a period of time. Uh, if you're a commissioned officer in the military looking to get out. Uh, if you're just someone looking for a federal law enforcement job, then this series is definitely for you. And today's program, or today's series, is going to be on a relatively new agency, and that is the Federal Air Marshal Service, FAMS. And again, this is one of the newer agencies. It really only began, uh, it really only had its genesis in the early 1960s. And um, initially it was called the Sky Marshall Program. We won't get into a lot of history here. But in the 1960s, most of you are not old enough to remember this, but I am, there were a lot of hijackings uh, of U.S. commercial airliners, mostly to Cuba by people. So they uh, uh, began to deploy federal law enforcement officers really heavily in the early 1970s on uh, airliners and some of them were hired specifically for the purpose called sky marshals and others were just other federal law enforcement agencies and uh, once screening at the airport uh, airport screening by contract people and metal detectors came into effect in 1973 the number of hijackings went way down thank god so uh, the need for sky marshals the perceived need for them uh, also went away so uh, by 1980, there were very, very few air marshals. And it was under, at the time, the Federal Aviation Administration. Fast forward to 9-11, okay? The terrorists used, well, commercial airliners to fly into the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and uh, probably would have gotten either the White House or the Capitol building had the passengers not risen up and taking control of the aircraft. I was a drug enforcement agent supervisor at the time. I was a DEA agent. Um, and I'll tell you just personal experience. One of the oddest experiences, feelings that you have, because I had been in law enforcement, I'd been in the military since the early, the mid 1970s when I first joined the military. And then I had been a state and local officer. And uh, then I flew out to Quantico to go to the DEA Academy and when we finished, um, January 31st, 1986, I said, go to the armory. You know, you're going to get your credentials and badge from the administrator. Go to the armory, draw your weapon, load it, because the weapons had always been stored in the armory till that point on. And then you're going to go to the airport and show them your creds and you're going to fly, uh, which, you know, was, I've never done that before, you know, uh, but uh, from that point on, during my career in federal law enforcement, uh, we were required to fly armed. So that was uh, just something that, you know, basically I came to take for granted. Uh, to a certain extent, it was kind of a pain because you had to be at the airport an hour early. And when I'd fly with my family, my wife and son, the security would take apart my son's stroller and I'm standing there with a weapon and they let me go around the, the desk. Sometimes it doesn't even make a lot of sense, okay? But um, the standing orders that we had at the time was uh, you'll, you'll fly arm, but you will only get involved if the crew requests it, even if a hijack took place. Now, this is up till 2001, okay? Even if a hijack, let them hijack the plane. That's what the standing orders were. After 9-11, that changed. <laughs> And the other thing that changed, I was a drug enforcement supervisor. They began looking to DEA and other agencies because they needed people to fly on commercial airliners really quick. 
uh, the the FAA at the time was going to was opening up the job for air marshal, but that takes time. You know, it takes time to hire people. It takes time to train people. A couple of years actually to go through the entire process where they would have enough. Until that time, the other agencies were tasked with providing agents, and I had to designate agents to go flying. You know, which. Uh, they complained about it. I said, you should be paying me to put you on that detail because what do you got to do? You just sit on a plane and you fly around. It's after 9-11, so everyone likes law enforcement still. And, uh, you know, but uh, then I'll tell you, they, they began their big hiring uh, push probably around 2002, and um, their recruitment ground was special agents, other federal law enforcement officers from other agencies. And I had a, a guy from my group go to one of these. And um, so they promised him the moon and everything, you know. And uh, a number of drug enforcement agents resigned and went over to the TSA. And I will tell you this, about three months later, they came back and said they wanted their old job back, but it was too late. You know? uh, now I'll get into the reasons for that in a, in a few moments, okay. Currently, uh, they're part of Homeland Security. Um, those who are hired must be 21, not older than 37, unless you can get a waiver. You can get a waiver if you've been in the military. Um, so you can get a, an age waiver to a certain level. I think it might be to 41. Don't quote me on that. It's the same as any federal law enforcement agency. Okay? The primary duties is providing security on United States commercial flights. So that's what you do. Uh, you're undercover. That means you are wearing plain clothes. You will have your firearm and an expandable baton. No pepper spray is allowed on a plane for whatever reason. I don't know, but it's not allowed. And handcuffs, restraints. Uh, hopefully more than one set of handcuffs. Uh, they're full federal law enforcement officers, which means you can make an arrest for any federal crime. You know, arrest your uncle for, for tax evasion if you want. But realistically, all you're going to be doing is anything to do with crimes aboard federal aircraft. Okay. How about investigative work? Now, you're not going to be doing much of that. There's a no-fly list and all that. But as a federal air marshal, you're not going to be doing much of that at all. Okay. Uh, investigative work? No. How about arrests? You're going to be making a lot of arrests? No, you're not. Now, they have a presence in the airport, and if the TSA screeners find somebody who's bringing something they shouldn't, then you would be called in to make an arrest on the ground. But let's face it, and this is a good thing. This is a good thing. There aren't a lot of issues with commercial air. So the number of times that federal air marshals have had to use enforcement action or make an arrest while on a commercial flight Thankfully, these are relatively rare, so you will go through a long career without doing really any investigation or making arrests. Now, this may be just what you're looking for. If you're on the Minneapolis Police Department and you're getting defunded, this might be just what you want because you're not going to have to deal with cranky people anymore, you know, too much, other than the flight crew. You know, they can be a pain, but... Whenever I would be put on, they always put me on beforehand, before everyone else, you know, and then they, they say, do you have your special baggage? Which is my weapon. Yeah, I have it. Is it empty? No, it's not empty. Why the hell would I carry an empty? It's stupid. I'm authorized to carry. You, know, you show me your, your credentials and all that. And This was long before 9-11. Now, you know, they have air marshals and they want federal law enforcement officers on the planes, you know, and uh, again, our policies change to where all federal law enforcement, and at least in my agency, on duty, off duty, on leave, you carry your weapon. International flight, you cannot, obviously. Only air marshals can, because we can't carry a gun in a foreign country. You know, if you're going there, if you're going to Italy as a tourist or something, you know, you just can't carry your weapon. Retired law enforcement, are retired from the federal government, can I carry a weapon on a board a plane? No, you know, I cannot. Uh, now, we do we, ha we do have expanded rights to carry under the Federal Law Enforcement Officer Safety Act, and I keep up my qualifications. You can carry in all 50 states, but, you know, I can't carry 
my weapon where I used to be able to carry it as a federal law enforcement officer. So that's, uh, so again, let's get in a little bit to the selection and the training. Um, obviously you have to be a United States citizen, you have to pass that background investigation, you're gonna have to pass a polygraph. A physical fitness test shouldn't be too hard. Uh, the hardest part of your training, it's two parts. Part of it is in Artesia, New Mexico, and part of it is in New Jersey. Why New Jersey? I have no idea. Maybe some congressman. Um, I'm just joking. Uh, the hardest part of the training is the marksmanship portion of the training. The academics is not that difficult. You don't do a lot of paperwork, paperwork, paperwork like you do in the DEA or the FBI because there's just that you're not doing investigations. The hardest part is the firearms training. And you have to be able to shoot very well in close quarters in a crowded aircraft cabin should the need arise. And you have to demonstrate your ability to do that on the range. And I think that's the hardest part of their academy. Okay. Now, once you're graduated from the academy, uh, again, the qualifications, you do not need, I think, a, a college degree for this job. I think if you have a college degree, you fully qualify for the job. But if you have a couple of years of college and some police experience, you should be fine if they're hiring. Okay, I don't think they are right this moment. If you have uh, military experience, military police as a corporal, sergeant, something like that, you should qualify for the position at the GS-7. And they have their own pay band, but it's roughly the same as a... I'm used to the general schedule. It's it's roughly the GS-7 level. You'd have to qualify for that, and then you, you promote upward. Your pay is uh, your locality pay where you live, plus your availability pay, 25% law enforcement availability pay. And if you are scheduled to fly at night, on weekends, Sunday pay, Sundays, holidays, you get that pay as well because you are scheduled to work on those days. But other than that, your Fair Labor Standards Act exempt. What are some of the good points of that job? It's a federal job, okay? Number two, if you're a police officer, <laughs> right now police have a lot of really, really rough duties uh, with your political management, uh, the political leaders in San Francisco and in LA, and in Chicago and in New York, I, I feel for you. I really, truly do. Um, you're not going to have that problem in the Federal Air Marshal Service. What problem are you going to have? Well, number one, this could be a perk. This could be a not a perk. Travel. You're going to travel a lot, more than any other agency, because that's what they do. They travel, okay? So if you don't like traveling around or being away from home, this is definitely not the job for you. If you don't like just sitting around, this is not the job for you because you're going to be spending a lot of time sitting down, looking out the window of a plane or looking at people on the plane. And that's your job. I mean, it's, you know, it's not the most exciting job in the world. Like I said, a number of people who had been in DEA in a big hurry, they signed up for this program in 2001, 2002. They came back, they wanted their old job back. As a special agent, this, this is not what it cracked up to be, and, and I, I can't say as I blame you. You know, I can't say as I blame them. Now, I know a number of men who went over as managers. They retired from either the Secret Service or the DEA, and they went into management positions in the new TSA, Federal Air Marshal program, which allowed them to get their retirement pay plus management pay, which was a lot of money. I mean, you're talking about a guy making. 250 a year. Uh, I'm talking 250,000 a year, you know, with their full civil service retirement plus the management pay. Usually, if you go to work for the federal government when you retire, you know, you you can't keep your your pension and your pay at the same time. But when you have a new agency, they're allowed to do that. Um, but uh, they're not a new agency anymore. You know. Um, so the the worst part about it, I think, is just the boredom. You know, I think that's really it. And just you're waiting for something dreadful to happen that may never happen on your watch. And that's a good thing, you know. Uh, and if it does and you stop it, you're a hero. And if you screw it up, well, they will say about you, you know, uh, you didn't do it right, but you won't be around to appreciate it. So uh, do I recommend the position? Again, as a D, as 
when I was in DEA, I did not consider applying there. Uh, no way. No way on God's green earth is that job for me. But that's me. Okay, that may not be you. If I had been a Chicago police officer, it might be for me. Right now in particular. Okay, because I just... Um, the federal government, you know, is very much likely to back, much more likely to back enforcement actions by its agents than I think a lot of state and locals. I think I've said that in the most politically correct way we can. <sighs> yeah. So what do I recommend? If you really want this job, if this is something that you want, you know, put in for it. Uh, you, know, you can only put in when they are actively hiring. Uh, you'll be assigned to an airport that you'll work out of. And um, now, as you move up the food chain, you'll be may be able to move from flying to a task force. That would be a good thing, which is a counterterrorism task force, perhaps led by the FBI. And that way, you would have uh, a regular investigative job. And if you move up the chain of command, then you won't be flying anymore. You'll be supervising or working in the airport. So that might be up your alley too. Uh, it's 20 years of service at age 50, 25 years regardless of age is the retirement requirement. Uh, federal law enforcement time does qualify. If you're a military veteran, you can buy your military service time, something I never did, uh, despite having six years in the military. Yeah, it's really stupid, you know, but when you get hired, you don't think of these things because retirement is so far off. So I got hired as a DEA agent, I was 25 years old, you know, 50 years old, that's half of your life in the future. You don't think about it, but, you know, it goes fast. So um, definitely something to think about, you know, again, the boredom, um, the long time away from home, sitting on a plane, bad things. The good thing, the travel, and you don't have to deal with a lot of things that city police officers have to deal with, okay? And you don't have tons of paperwork. You don't have to spend a lot of time in court as you do in DEA or in some of the other federal law enforcement agencies. So you're not going to have U.S. attorneys and judges on top of your supervisor putting pressure on you, okay? And some of these other agencies, such as mine, former agency, you know, they would put pressure on your group or on you. You're the group supervisor arrests, seizures, you know, or if you're an agent, you're, you know, how many informants do you have? How many cases have you have you opened and so on and so forth? With this, you know, it's, it's pretty much a, a protective job. So um, if you have questions, put them in the comments section. I will try to answer them. And uh, the next program, my next installment will be on the original federal law enforcement agency, and that is the United States Marshal Service. So have a good one. God bless all of you.